This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2267, Learn from Loneliness, and Give Yourself Permission to Breathe, both by Ali Cornish of everthrive.org, and I'm Justin Mollick, the guy that reads to you every single day of the year, including weekends and holidays, to help you live a more meaningful and positive life, two posts today. So let's get right to them as we optimize your life. Learn from Loneliness by Ali Cornish of everthrive.org. Do you like to be alone? Oftentimes I do. When I'm alone, I'm at ease. In my solitude, I'm free to be my authentic self. And even though I could just be comfortably hanging out in my living room, I feel like I'm away from the constraints of society. When we are comfortable and happy in our aloneness, we can use the situation to reflect on life and use it as an opportunity to experience growth. However, many people aren't happy being alone. Instead of feeling alone, they feel lonely. Loneliness is something very different than being alone. When we are lonely, we are not reflecting on our lives with growth and mindfulness. We are not at ease with ourselves and we are not free. Loneliness, when allowed to take hold and fester, can cause anxiety and depression as well as an array of physical ailments leading to poor health and a shorter life expectancy. Instead of encountering truths and experiencing growth, loneliness gives way, quote, to the perverse, the illicit, the absurd. And that's by Thomas Mann in Death in Venice and Other Tales. Loneliness does not imply aloneness. We can be lonely even when we are surrounded by people. Loneliness is an emotion that can be experienced suddenly or over time. The abrupt loss of a loved one, a job, or a marriage can initiate sudden feelings of isolation and hopelessness. Gradual loneliness is caused by our tendency to self-isolate because our expectations of others may be too high, or we might not be able to withstand the social stress of communicating with others. If, after a period of self-isolation, we do not initiate contact or have the occasion to, we sometimes end up scrutinizing others' behaviors towards us. We think that their benevolent interactions are fake or forced. This produces anger and fear, causing us to withdraw in our loneliness even more. In this way, loneliness has the potential to alter our perception. It is very difficult to climb out of a pit of despair when we are emotionally raw and feel that we do not deserve the contact of others. In our loneliness, we begin to see the world as a negative place. According to Thomas Wolfe in his essay entitled God's Lonely Man, loneliness is a, quote, central and inevitable fact of human existence, end quote. When experienced, this emotion can be devastating. However, loneliness should be explored and understood before it is banished because it can inform us of behavior patterns that we need to change. Loneliness forces us to make decisions about our lives. It is important to be aware of our emotional well-being and acknowledge when we are feeling lonely. In order to stop our descent into the abyss of loneliness, we have to understand that change needs to occur. Loneliness should be explored and understood. We owe it to ourselves to take action when we feel cast aside or unnecessarily isolated, even when we are surrounded by people. We should push ourselves and reach out to those who care for us. We need to reinsert ourselves into the work of friendship where our social needs will be satisfied and pangs of loneliness will subside. When we force ourselves out of loneliness by prioritizing our emotional health, the quality of our lives will improve and we will inevitably thrive. Give yourself permission to breathe by Ali Cornish of everthrive.org. Has anyone ever told you just to slow down and take a breath? How did it make you feel? Depending on your outlook, maybe you reacted with confusion or frustration. You breathe all day, you'd be dead if you weren't breathing. Why is this person telling me to breathe? That's dumb. Or maybe you paused and really thought about the advice. Sure, I breathe, but I'm rarely aware of how I'm breathing since my awareness is acutely focused on other things. Like everyone else, I'm sometimes anxious. I often stress about work tasks, my to-do lists, and infinite personal and family obligations. Provoked by the constraints of an average workday, 
I often stress about my productivity. I'm always tormented by the lure of technology and the seemingly urgent notifications of my iPhone. All this builds up and creates anxiety. Research shows that anxiety can restrict our breathing, leading us to take quicker, shallow breaths, resulting in limited oxygen absorption and a spike in blood pressure. Cortisol levels increase, leading to restricted circulation and decreased immunity. In searching for quick fixes, I found that meditative practices such as yoga can lower anxiety levels. I've belonged to at least three yoga studios in the last 15 years. Each time I tried yoga, I was initially open to it. But mid-pose, instead of breathing, I began stressing about when I should breathe or not breathe. When should I breathe in? What should I do while I'm breathing? Am I even doing this pose correctly? My mentality towards yoga as a cure for anxiety has never really worked for me. I was forcing myself to breathe and measuring my effectiveness against others in the mirror. I needed to change my mindset. I needed to grant myself permission to breathe. Henrik Edberg in his article, The Power of Breathing, suggests taking two minutes away from the anxiety-inducing situation to focus on breath. I found that two minutes is more than enough to find space when my world closes in. Anytime I encounter stress or feel overwhelmed, I simply take one large breath in and out. I do this alone or in the midst of a work presentation or a lively gathering. No one can tell. I do this when I'm cooking, writing, or when I find myself stuck in an endless social media loop. Now, I practice conscious breathing. Taking one deep breath helps us to consciously pause, reflect, and refocus our perceptions removing us from the source of anxiety. After taking one breath, whatever was bothersome becomes a little less annoying and definitely more approachable. We never have anything to lose by just taking one conscious, full breath. There's so much to gain by granting ourselves permission to breathe. You just listened to the post titled Learning from Loneliness and Give yourself permission to breathe, both by Allie Cornish of everthrive.org. And thank you to Allie. The breath is certainly tied to our feelings. It kind of reminds me of the study where forcing yourself to smile actually then makes you feel happier. It's really interesting stuff. And I think that's the case with breathing. To me, it's pretty intuitive. If you force yourself to slow your breath, everything else sort of has to follow suit in your body. I'm not gonna say that's easy, especially in moments of panic. It's hard to even think about it and go, okay, time to breathe slowly when things are spiraling out of control. And honestly, that can sometimes lead to more panic in certain situations. But with practice, I strongly believe it can work. There's a trick called box breathing where you breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and then hold again for four seconds. That's a tactic endorsed by Navy SEALs in moments of high stress, and it could work for you. But again, I think it does take practice, and just doing it once and not having results might not be the best test. But all that said, even just paying attention to your breath, which really is the main practice of meditation, has been proven to have benefit. I like to do it before falling asleep, even counting my breaths sometimes. By the time I'm at around 30, I'm usually falling asleep. It's done well for me, Not to mention the amount of time I've spent meditating over the years, I wouldn't take any of that back. So I'd agree and say that if you have a moment today, check on that breath, take some deep breaths or even just one like she mentioned in this article, and then see how you feel. Have a great day and week full of deep breaths. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday show where your optimal life awaits.